the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, monks, faithfuls, those who are here in this holy church, and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one in nature and one in essence, bless you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible and or invisible. In Jesus' mighty name, we always pray, for he is the only way to the Father, and he is the only way to the truth, and he is the only way to eternal life. Amen. The Gospel of today is according to St. Luke, and it, is, um, it includes two chapters from uh, chapter 12, um, verse 57, till the end, and chapter 13, till verse 17. The Lord Jesus, in this Gospel of today, is talking to the Jews, and He's saying, why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? He's asking everyone to judge for themselves what is right. He says, as you go with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way, lest he drag you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer put you in prison, I tell you, you will never get out till you have paid the very last copper or penny. Why don't you just judge for yourselves what is right? While you are going with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way lest he take you to the judge and then the judge take, sends you to the officer and the officer puts you in prison and you're not going to leave that prison until you pay the last cent you owe. Who is our accuser while we are walking along the way with him? Who is the accuser? The accuser is your enemy. The accuser is the one who is your enemy. Every single one of us, we have enemies to us. There is sin, there is condemnation, there is Satan, and there is death. But the greatest enemy of all is me. I am the number one accuser of my own self. I am the number one enemy to my own self. And this is one of the main reasons, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons why God did not put an end to that angel that broke his word while he was in heaven and later on became Satan that one of the main reasons why God didn't put an end to Satan because if Satan is my enemy then I myself am a greater enemy than Satan to my own self and this is where the Lord Jesus said do not be afraid of the one who kills the body but has no authority over your spirit but I say to you be more so afraid of the one who kills the body and has the authority to throw your spirit in hell. Who is the one that kills the body but has no power, authority over the spirit? Satan and Satan through people. People which go, go against me because Satan is behind this, the ultimate they can do is kill the flesh, but they have no power to kill the spirit. Satan can kill the flesh but has no power 
to kill the spirit when the spirit is committed to the hand of the almighty heavenly father the lord jesus on the cross he said father in your hand i commit my spirit so i'm the greatest enemy make peace with your accuser while you're walking with him along the way while you are still alive is walking while the spirit is in the flesh i'm still walking who is my accuser the flesh who needs to make amends with the flesh the spirit the spirit is placed in this flesh and as long as the spirit is in the flesh in the flesh the spirit is walking along with the flesh who is the accuser he says settle your case the flesh the spirit says i want to go to church the flesh says i'm taking you to the club the spirit says i want to praise the lord the flesh says i will swear at everything around me the spirit says i want to be in the light the flesh says i'm taking you downtown where darkness awaits you the spirit says i want to be in the, with the lord jesus the flesh says i'll take you to satan the flesh is the accuser all day long the spirit wants to pray the flesh wants to sing worldly song the spirit wants to fast the flesh says in your dreams one day they came to michael angelo this artist so they asked him they said michael and hello to everyone who's michael said michael says yes we would like you to draw us a portrait depicting fasting he said leave it with me come back at a later stage so he done the painting he finished he called them he said come the portrait he split it in half they looked at it had no idea what michael angelo meant in that painting one half of the portrait there was a very chubby pig and a very skinny um, eagle being dragged on the ground behind the pig so the pig dragged that eagle that skeleton behind him on the ground the other half a very chubby and healthy eagle and a very skinny skeleton pig grabbed by that eagle and taken that skinny pig in the heavens soaring very high in the heavens they said we wanted a painting reflecting fasting what is this michael he said let me explain he said the pig is your flesh the eagle is your spirit you feed the flesh and you starve the spirit the flesh will grab the spirit and drag it in the streets of king's cross the flesh will grab your spirit and drag it in drugs in alcoholism in gambling in everything that is against the almighty god's will that is under the sun he said but when you feed the spirit look after the spirit and starve the flesh the spirit will grab the flesh 
and will make it fly high in the heavens of Christ. You will take the flesh where he dislikes, but the flesh will be taken whether the flesh likes it or not. The first time you dragged the flesh to the church, it was used to sitting in the club. It was used to sitting in a concert. It was used to sitting in the midst of friends, laughing, drinking, huffing, and puffing, and doing everything illegal in the sight of God. And the flesh was having fun, never went to sleep, never said, I'm tired, never said, this is boring, never said, uh, this is enough. Never it was enough. But by the grace of the Lord, reaching out to you, touching you so deeply and profoundly, awakened that sleepy conscience, yet I can dare to say dead conscience. Because the Lord Jesus is known to raise the dead. When he awakened that sleepy dead conscience in you, for the first time you wake up and you say, I'm going to church where this good looking bishop is preaching. I had to rub that one in, eh? Actually, not just the best looking bishop. <laughs> you came the first time and you sat in the church. Man, it was a life sentence. I'm sitting and I am aching all over. I've got a headache. Actually, it's a migraine now because the bishop speaks for too long, so I've got a migraine. Every bone in me is aching. My back is gone. My knees are gone. My eyes are gone. I'm falling asleep. I'm yawning. I'm turning. I'm getting up. I'm stretching. I just want to get out of there. I'm suffocating. But the Lord says, judge for yourself what is right. But deep down, when I left, inside of me, there was something different. So I came back again and again and again and again. What did I do? by coming back to the Lord again and again and again, I allowed the Lord to feed my spirit. My spirit that was malnourished, my spirit that was always almost dying off, is revived in me. The spirit became strong. The spirit became healthy. The spirit became revived. I am alive from within. For the first time ever in my entire life, this till this very moment, I have tasted what true inner peace is all about. I slept that night at peace. No fear, no anxiety. It was calm. And then I got up, I said, buddy, he said, oink, 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 he's a pig, huh? Just like Tony the Maltese, he said he was eating so much, too much, ended up eating like a pig in it. I love the Maltese. Kifinti, Taiba, Allah. Seeing the Maltese language as Arabic, and I speak Arabic, so we're, we're, we're neighbors, eh? We're cousins. Yo, go the Maltese baby. So the spirit became strong. I disciplined the flesh. When, when Great Lent, when the Great Lent comes, you know, fasting time comes. Some people, they just don't know what to do. Um, I'm going to give up on chocolate. Because 
when I see chocolate, I am weak. When I see abla, I'm weak. You know, I don't know. I think it was in Granville somewhere. Is it still there? Abla in the corner? Okay, go abla, yalla. <laughs> when I see chocolate, when I see all this Lebanese sweets, man, how can I, how can I resist? This is Habib Albi's done it. From the heart to the heart, heart to heart, huh? Basita. Mm? So when I saw all those sweets, I was shaking. I couldn't. Um, I have to watch YouTube. I have to watch TV. I have to do this. I have to eat. When I see food, oh, I can't. You're telling me for 50 scorching days you can't have meat? Are you kidding me? Man, I'll lose it. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you and then barbecue you and I'll eat you if you don't give me meat. So they try to punish the flesh. And they struggle. The Lord is never about punishment. The Lord is all about discipline. There is a huge difference. Don't punish your child. Discipline your child, mom and dad. Punishment is you yell, you scream, you lose it, and you smack them. Discipline. My baby, come here. Yes, I know. They liked it, huh? <laughs> I said, yeah, please tell my mom and dad to talk like this. <laughs> talk this way to me, please. My angel, come here. Habibi. <laughs> you spilled the milk on daddy's couch. And now daddy can't sit on that couch because it's all wet and it's sticky. It's okay, my darling. The milk, the couch, and daddy, ruhulik fidwa. All for your eyes' sake. You are my daddy's angel. I love you more than anything and everything in this whole world, not just in this house. But let me tell you and show you one thing, my darling, that we need to learn how to behave and to do things at home, outside of home, everywhere else. She will spill the milk again. That's okay, darling. Mommy's paying for it. Doesn't matter. We discipline. One day, this young man, about 20, 21 years of age, I've said this story, I'll share it again. He approached me. He said, Father, I said, yes, son. He said, Father, I've, I want to confess. I want to sit with you one-on-one, -on -one, and I want to confess everything that I've done in my life till this moment. He was about 20, 21 years of age. I said, yeah, no problem. He said, but I'm, I'm very, very scared to take this step. I said, why, son? He said, because my fear is if I sit with you and tell you what I've done, which I am not proud of at all, but my worry is once I tell you what I've done, you will know what I've done. Your look at me will change. Will you look at me differently, Father, once I tell you what I've done? I said, of course, I will change toward you. He went pale and he went back. He said, this is exactly, that's what I was fearing. You see, you're going to change toward me. I'm not going to confess. I said, hang on. You asked me if you confess, will you, will you look at me differently? I said, yes, but you didn't ask me in which way I will look at you differently. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, ask. He said, okay, Father, how are you going to change toward me? I said, before I answer you, let me ask you this question, my dear son. Do you believe that I love you as a son in Christ Jesus? He said, yes, Father. I said, are you sure? 
100% you believe that I love you as my own son in Christ? He said, I have no doubt whatsoever in this, as, in this regard. I said, well, now my son, I love you once. After you confess, I love you a million times moreover. This is the way I'll change toward you. He started crying and he confessed. Discipline. Don't put fear in people, put hope. Put hope. I've sat with people that have done things beyond your imagination. But they left crying like a baby for the Lord Jesus. Discipline the body. One day, we were doing a Bible preach for the youth in English. And I walked, and then after, shortly after that, two young men from the church committee came running after me. They said, Bishop, this young girl, she was sitting and putting her, crossing her legs, and she didn't even move while you passed by. She was disrespectful to you. We're going to go and tell her off. I said, she disrespected me, didn't she? Yes, not you. No, it was you, Father. I said, do you see me upset? Do you see me angry? I said, what's it to you? Okay, cool down, bro. Relax. After one month of coming, she kissed the bishop's ring. Don't force it. Poor girl was her first time ever to coming to church. She has no idea. She looked at me as gray mate. After a little while, she realized, okay, he's a bishop. All right. I learned. Oh, he's a father. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is the custom in the church. Okay, you kiss the ring as a, as a token of respect for the priesthood ring. Okay, I've learned now. The aircon is on cool, man. Was it hot? It's cold? It's hot. It's hot, it's cold. <laughs> um, discipline the body while you have the chance, while you are living, walking in, on this earth. It is extremely easy to be forgiven by the Lord as long as the spirit is in the flesh. Don't wait for the spirit to leave the flesh and start prophesying about where it's gonna go. Listen, mate, focus on earth. Don't focus elsewhere. If you can't fix what you see, how can you fix what you can't see? Anybody home? While you're in the flesh, the Lord is very clear. Come, I won't let you go out empty-handed. Just come. Just come. But if I get thrown in the prison, <laughs> who says I'm going to come out? Who says? The Lord entered a synagogue and it was a Sabbath, Saturday. And then he saw this woman who had this hump. So her head was looking downward. She's got a big hump on her back. She can't lift her head up. 18 years she has been in this condition 
18 years not able to see heaven the sky the only thing she was able to see for 18 years was earth the dirt the dust the mud the filth the filth of the world all of us before the Lord Jesus came we all had this hump and all of us we were ill we were in this condition for 18 years this woman represents every single human being why 18 why the number 18 because the number 18 has got to do with 8 and 10 10 commandments God gave to Moses 10 commandments the law of God the law of God 8 represent resurrection because the Lord Jesus rose from the dead on the eighth day which is Sunday now when you read in Genesis 1 when you read in Genesis 1 about the creations the days of creation the first day of the week is Sunday and the eighth day is Sunday from Sunday to Sunday is eight days this is why the Lord Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday ie the eighth day why the eighth number eight represent resurrection eternal and what is resurrection eternity eternal life because this realm is governed by seven the number seven seven days of the week this realm walks by seven the next realm heaven the heavenly father's house that realm walks by one day and this day has no end forever and ever and ever more amen that day is the eighth number eight is outside the time of this realm it represents eternal life and when you put number eight on its side you get the symbol of eternity two circles inside one another you put a dot anywhere that dot can be the beginning and that dot can be at the same time the end but neither to that beginning there is a beginning nor to that end an end you're going with no beginning and no end number eight eternity all of us we the ultimate we achieved we saw the filth of this world why because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God no one is good but God all of us have sinned and sin made this back tilt down with a big hump and this head was not able to see heaven anymore all it was able to see the filth of this world the Lord Jesus came died on the cross fulfilled the Ten Commandments the technical ones and the entire commandments of God he is the fullness and the fulfillment of all God's law by dying on the cross he fulfilled the Ten Commandments which I broke all and on Sunday when he rose from the dead he fixed that hump and he said to me stand straight and when I stood straight the first thing this woman did she praised God and the way you praise God is when you are able to lift your head up to heaven where our father who art in heaven is and she looked up to heaven for the first time in 18 years she was able to see heaven where God is she praised him when we had an encounter with the Lord Jesus it was for the first time ever I saw the face of God heaven all I used to see before was the face of Satan hell the world 
the pig's field. I was swimming in sin. I was swimming in poison. The Lord Jesus, by his precious blood that he shed on the cross on Calvary, by his death, burial, and resurrection, said, lift up your head high and thank God for what, he's, uh, for what he has done for you. He sent you his only begotten son so that whoever believeth in him never perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I finished early today. Oh, I forgot. No, just kidding. <laughs> Do you rush to go home? You sure? Mm. I'm going to be honest. We're going to go to confession now, be honest. Yalla, yalla. <laughs> this guy said, why don't they play poker in the zoo? He said, because there is too many cheaters. <laughs> Did you get that one? <laughs> Man, I don't know where I get these weird jokes, you know. <laughs> but they're funny because they're weird. <laughs> Um, with the Lord, everything is beautiful. Believe you me. If you think you come to the Lord and you're going to be restricted, you're going to be chained up, no. This is the flesh deceiving you. This is the flesh playing a trick on you because the flesh doesn't want to give up on the club. So, starve the flesh. Discipline the flesh. So today, you're not going to the club, surprise, I'm taking you to the church. And I can see some of you are getting on the edge now. It's time, Bishop, yalla. Yalla, Habib Albi. Listen, if you whinge and complain, I'll send Marshal Bilal on you. Huh? I'll call him right now. He will come. <laughs> Long time ago, I went to St. Sharbel's church at Panjbo. I've told you this, eh? It was at midnight, past midnight. Nobody there, only me. On the side, there was um, a statue of St. Sharbel, dressed up in black with a white beard. And I was sitting just right there. A, a car drove in through the car park. I said, oh, it must be the security um, guy is coming to say you need to leave. I'm going to lock the gates, whatever. So I got up to walk, and as the car turns, the lights hit towards where I was, and then I think the Formula One cars do not drive as fast as that Toyota Corolla did. Four cylinder, 1.8 liter, went flying. I said, Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? And then it hit me. I said, Oh, I'm not Marsharbel, please. Are you going to get me into trouble now, brother? I was a priest. So when I was a priest, everything was black. There was no red belt in karate. So, so I was all in black, white bead, fits. <laughs> I said, listen, you're going to get me in trouble now with the Lord Jesus. I'm nowhere near St. Sherbal. Habib Albi, take it easy. I'm just a beggar sitting here. Yeah, he thought I was Mar Sherbal. He must have gone and said, Marshall was walking, was walking. <laughs> um, well, we love Marshall anyway. Yeah, he's, he's beautiful. I'll tell you a little thing about Marshall. Long time ago, um, I was very, very down. Unbearable down. Don't tell anyone, okay? Unbearable down. So, um, I took myself to the church. 
I used to go when there was no one there. Like I, I, I like it more. So I went there. I said, Marsharbel. Uh, I was speaking like in Arabic, yeah, like you know the Middle Eastern style. لا حد قال لو كافك ها إذا ما بتعمل إشي خلاص انتهى. If you don't do something now, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. That's it. I'm Middle Eastern. I'm stubborn. My blood is boiling up. I can't take it. You either help me now or forget it. I'm not calling you. I'm not coming. Go home. I walk in. I walk out. Brand new. Brand new. Saints got nothing to do with you being part of their circle. Like, if the saint like is Catholic, you have to be Catholic. Otherwise, he's not going to talk to you. <laughs> oh, so an Orthodox goes to a Catholic saint. What are you doing here? You're trespassing. Excuse me. You, I only talk to my own people, Catholics, brother. No. Saints in heaven, the names cease. There is no Catholics. There is no Orthodox. There is the family of Christ. Sons to the Almighty God. Brothers in Christ. Brothers. They don't differentiate. We do on earth. They don't. So yeah, discipline your body, come to church, teach your body to learn to sit in the church and to be more often in the presence of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus. Everything is a learning curve. No one came from the womb of their mother literate. Everyone was illiterate. I had to learn. I had to allow myself to be exposed to this and that in order to learn here and pick from here and choose from here. Everything comes with time. Everything, every habit comes with practices. Repetitive practice. That's how you pick that habit. Break that habit. Oh, I've got a gambling problem father i don't know what to do with it yes you can i have a drinking problem i don't know what to do with it yes you can you can when you settle with your accuser how do you settle with your accuser come to the lord i'll leave you with this the body and the spirit, the spirit and the body. These are the main components of what makes a human. And what ties these two together is the soul, S-O-U-L. But the main are the body and the spirit. And what ties them together is the soul, S-O-U-L. The body and the spirit, I'll say, it is what salt is all about. Salt is made of two ingredients. Chlor, chlorine and sodium. Chlorine and sodium. If you separate them from each other, from one another, chlor on its own is poisonous. And sodium on its own is also poisonous. But when you put the two together at the right measurement, at the right dosage, tasty. The food is tasty. Why is the food tasty? There is salt in it. The salt is two ingredients that are poisonous, but they become extremely magnificent in taste when you have the right measurement. And the right measurement is the brilliant wife slash mother who is a genius in cooking. She knows the measurement by just looking. She doesn't need to put it in any measure cup. She grabs it with her fingers 
and she knows this is the right measurement to make my son happy and my pain in the neck husband happy as well just by the hand why because she is she has mastered she became a master in cooking the ultimate master Jesus Christ you see if you walk by the flesh sodium poison and if you walk only by the spirit chlor poison some people ignore the body altogether and it's all spirit this is what we call an oversaved Christian if you sit with an oversaved Christian you will run as fast as you can from that place because an oversaved Christian is a suffocation to you I'll give you an example you went with your oversaved friend who is Christian to McDonald's right and you're sitting and you say casual huh it's a casual thing you say I'm hungry all of a sudden this guy jumps hallelujah Jesus said I am the living bread that descended from heaven he who eats me will live in me forever man I worked all day long I didn't have a drop of water I'm so thirsty hallelujah Jesus said I am the living waters he who drinks of me shall never thirst again I can't find my car keys. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you need the keys to enter the kingdom. Listen, mate, I don't drive a kingdom. I can't fit it in my little garage. Relax. Because it's all a spirit. Hallelujah. No. You come to the bishop, you say, Bishop, you want to go to the club? I say, Hallelujah. <laughs> Take me to the club because as, at the moment I walk in, I'll say, Allah Akbar. <laughs> My name is Ahmed, I'll blow you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christianity is never forced because Christianity is the only belief that is based on love and when it comes to love it has to be given naturally willingly freely not forcefully So, mom, next time your daughter doesn't want to come to church, don't force her, just let me know. I'll wear a mask. At night time, I'll come and say, boo. She'll be running to the Lord. Be happy. I just wanted to make you smile and make you laugh. This is the way we need to be if we are true Christians. You see a Christian that says I'm a Christian and looks grumpy? What kind of Christian is that? How are you, mate? Whoa. Are you happy? Yeah. Well, you don't look it. We need to relax and take things easy. For the Lord has fixed everything. Why are you worried? Don't be. Whatever you've lost, whatever you were unable to achieve, leave it to the Lord's capable hands. Let Him navigate you as He wishes, as He pleases, as He sees everything. He knows you more than you. Let Him. Let Him, my beloved. So come more often to church, say goodbye to the club. Come and drink the divine heavenly wine, not the earthly one that takes you to perdition. 
but drink the heavenly wine that takes you to everlasting life. Be close to the Lord and to his holy house. Amen. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to have mercy on all of us. Let us confess before the Lord while we recite this absolution prayer, seeking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all, pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the works of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus forgive us all and bless us all and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in this holy Eucharist, which is the true body and the true blood of Christ. This is the true body and the true blood of Christ that takes away the sins of the world.